I am Tuba. Welcome to our English lesson. In this video, we're going to learn some interesting vocabulary and expressions. This is a great opportunity for you to practice your English listening and speaking skills with examples from everyday life. Listen carefully. If you go to the gym regularly, if you exercise regularly, eventually your body changes, and we would then describe you by saying that you are in shape or saying that you are fit. A gym has all of the equipment that you need in order to exercise. You know, people who hit the gym are always in shape or fit, so I decided to join a gym to exercise and work out. Let me tell you about my gym journey. I was super excited to get fit. So I decided to join a gym to exercise and work out. This gym actually doesn't require a membership, though, for me, because it's at my school. Before getting into the action, I always warm up my muscles. I lift lighter weights or I walk before I run. A warm-up prepares my body for exercise, so the first thing I do is warm up. The second thing I do is stretch to get ready to do some harder exercise. I stretch my arms and legs and do some neck rolls. Stretching is as important as the exercise, but I'm careful not to overstretch because I don't want to hurt myself. After stretching, I usually do some cardio exercises. I love cardio because cardio exercises improve heart and lung fitness. I use a treadmill or jog outside for cardio. For me, I know I'm getting a good cardio workout if my heart rate is above 135 beats per minute. If it goes above 175 beats per minute, that's a little too high and I will slow down. So cardio is one way to improve my cardiovascular fitness. After cardio, I move on to bodybuilding exercises. I lift weights to strengthen my muscles. I start with the lighter weights and then move on to the heavier ones. I use free weights like dumbbells and barbells. I do three sets of 10 reps. Resistance bands and machines are also helpful. Then I complete my workout with other bodybuilding exercises. I could use a weighted ball to do different exercises to strengthen my body. Sometimes I want to work out on the floor and then I use a yoga mat. It makes it a little easier to work out on the floor. At my small gym, there are no personal trainers, there are no fitness classes, but I enjoy the solitude. My gym is quiet and free, which I love. I rely on my fitness tracker for guidance. Interesting vocabulary and expressions. Before we start our speaking practice, let's look at some new words and expressions from our story. To be in shape, vertical bar to be fit. To look very healthy, usually from exercise. Gym a place with equipment for exercising or working out. To exercise vertical bar to work out, the act of moving the body to increase your fitness level. A workout, a period of time during which someone exercises. Warm up, light exercise done before more intense exercise. Stretch, to extend the muscles before or after exercising. Cardio, Exercise is done to improve heart and lung fitness, such as treadmill, elliptical machine, exercise bike, rowing machine. Treadmill. A treadmill is an exercise machine that you can use for walking and running. Heart rate. The number of times your heart beats each minute. Free weights. Heavy objects lifted during strength training that are not attached to a machine, like dumbbell, barbell, kettlebell. Resistance band, a gaint rubber band which, when you pull it, has a lot of resistance. Yoga mat, a soft mat used for working out. Weighted ball vertical bar medicine ball. This ball actually weights 3 kilogram. This ball used to do different exercises to strengthen the body, not the kind that used to kick around or to play sports, but the kind you use for stretching and to do some strength training. Fitness tracker, a small device worn to help a person their workouts that you wear on your wrist. Reps, vertical bar repetitions, a repeated series of movements when strength training. Sets, a repeated series of repetitions. I did three sets of 10 reps. If I lift weight 10 times, I count that as a 10 reps. 
if I do that three times, so I lift the weight ten times, rest, lift it ten more times and rest, lift it ten more times and rest, that would mean I did three sets. I was super excited to get fit, so I decided to join a gym to exercise and work out. This gym actually doesn't require a membership, though, for me, because it's at my school. Before getting into the action, I always warm up my muscles. I lift lighter weights or I walk before I run. A warm-up prepares my body for exercise, so the first thing I do is warm up. The second thing I do is stretch to get ready to do some harder exercise. I stretch my arms and legs and do some neck rolls. Stretching is as important as the exercise, but I'm careful not to overstretch because I don't want to hurt myself. After stretching, I usually do some cardio exercises. I love cardio because cardio exercises improve heart and lung fitness. I use a treadmill or jog outside for cardio. For me, I know I'm getting a good cardio workout if my heart rate is above 135 beats per minute. If it goes above 175 beats per minute, that's a little too high and I will slow down. So cardio is one way to improve my cardiovascular fitness. After cardio, I move on to bodybuilding exercises. I lift weights to strengthen my muscles. I start with the lighter weights and then move on to the heavier ones. I use free weights like dumbbells and barbells. I do three sets of 10 reps. Resistance bands and machines are also helpful. Then I complete my workout with other bodybuilding exercises. I could use a weighted ball to do different exercises to strengthen my body. Sometimes I want to work out on the floor, and then I use a yoga mat. It makes it a little easier to work out on the floor. At my small gym, there are no personal trainers, there are no fitness classes, but I enjoy the solitude. My gym is quiet and free, which I love. I rely on my fitness tracker for guidance. On our wedding anniversary, my spouse and I decided to add a dash of excitement to our celebration. Living in our snug town, we wanted to create a memory that would last a lifetime. As the morning sun painted the sky with hues of pink and orange, we kicked off the day with a surprise. I led my partner to our favorite cafe, the one with the cozy corner by the window. We enjoyed a leisurely breakfast at our favorite local cafe. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee filled the air as we savored each bite of our favorite pastries. The cafe had a charming atmosphere, and we appreciated the quiet moments together over breakfast. I couldn't contain my excitement, and with a playful grin, I spilled the tea on our secret plan for the day. After breakfast, we took a stroll in the nearby park hand in hand. The park was adorned with colorful flowers, and the gentle breeze added a touch of romance to our walk. We reminisced about the beautiful journey we've had so far, sharing stories and laughter. For lunch, we decided to have a picnic in the park. We packed a basket with sandwiches, fruits, and a bottle of sparkling juice. Finding a shady spot under a big tree, we enjoyed our picnic surrounded by the sounds of nature. It felt like a small, private celebration of our love. In the afternoon, we visited a local art gallery. We explored the exhibits, discussing our favorite pieces and discovering new artists. The art gallery added an artistic flair to our anniversary, and we left feeling inspired. As the evening approached, we dined at a quaint restaurant with a view of the sunset. The cozy ambience and delicious food made the evening truly special. We toasted to the years we've spent together and the many more to come. Back at home, we exchanged small gifts and shared a dance in the living room. The day ended with a sense of contentment and gratitude for the love we've built over the years. It was a perfect anniversary celebration, 
a day that highlighted the beauty of simplicity and the joy found in each other's company. Interesting vocabulary and expressions. Before we start our speaking practice, let's look at some new words and expressions from our story. Dash, noun, a small quantity of something. Example, we added a dash of excitement to our anniversary celebration. Dash of excitement, idiomatic expression. Adding a small amount of thrill or enthusiasm. Example, the surprise added a dash of excitement to our day. Snug, adjective. Comfortable, warm, and cozy. Example, living in our snug town, we created beautiful memories. Adorned, verb. Decorated or ornamented. Example, the park was adorned with colorful flowers. Reminisced, verb. Recalled past experiences and memories. Example, we reminisced about the beautiful journey we've had so far. Quaint, adjective. Attractively unusual or old-fashioned. Example, we dined at a quaint restaurant with a view of the sunset. Contentment, noun. A state of happiness and satisfaction. Example, the day ended with a sense of contentment and gratitude. Spill the tea, idiom. To reveal or disclose information, especially gossip. Example, over breakfast, I couldn't contain my excitement, so I spilled the tea on our secret plan. Kick off, phrasal verb. To begin or start something, often used in the context of an event, activity, or process. Example, the football match will kick off at 7 p.m., In the morning, Sarah went to the beach. The sun was up, and the sky looked pretty with pink and orange colors. Waves came to the shore, making a nice sound. The beach had shells and sand for building castles. Sarah took a big towel and found a comfy spot. She liked the warmth of the sun on her skin. Kids nearby were laughing and building sand castles. Sarah felt happy just listening. It was like a perfect picture. Later, she went into the cool water. It felt nice, and she forgot about her worries. She played with the gentle waves, feeling free. When she came out, she felt strong and happy. Sarah walked along a path with shops and ice cream stands. She got her favorite flavor and enjoyed every bite. With ice cream in hand, she walked more, taking pictures of everything she liked. When she shared the pictures online, her friends smiled too. The sun set in the evening, painting the sky in warm colors. Sarah felt really happy. The next day, Sarah woke up with excitement. She decided to visit the beach again for another day of fun. This time, she brought a colorful beach ball and a frisbee. She played games with new friends she met on the shore. The laughter and cheers echoed, creating a joyful atmosphere. As the sun climbed higher, Sarah built a sand castle with intricate details. Shells adorned the castle, making it a masterpiece of the shore. Passersby admired her creation. Feeling hungry, Sarah headed to a beachside cafe. The aroma of grilled seafood and fresh fruits filled the air. She ordered a tropical smoothie and savored the delicious blend of flavors. With renewed energy, Sarah decided to explore the tide pools. She discovered small sea creatures like crabs and colorful fish. Each discovery brought a smile to her face. As the day went on, a beachside concert began. Local musicians played lively tunes, and people danced barefoot in the sand. Sarah joined in feeling the rhythm and happiness in the air. With the sun setting again, Sarah sat on the beach, watching the sky change colors. She reflected on the two wonderful days filled with simple joys and new experiences. She took one last walk along the water's edge, letting the waves tickle her toes. Grateful for the moments, Sarah headed home with a heart full of happy memories. Interesting vocabulary and expressions. Before we start our speaking practice, let's look at some new words and expressions from our story. 
shore, meaning the land along the edge of a body of water. Example: Sarah enjoyed walking along the shore, feeling the sand beneath her feet. Intricate, meaning complicated or detailed. Example: Sarah built an intricate sandcastle, adding small details and decorations. Adorned, meaning decorated or embellished. Example: Shells adorned the sandcastle, making it even more beautiful. Tranquil, meaning calm and peaceful. Example: Sarah sat on the beach, enjoying the tranquil sound of the waves. Aroma, meaning a pleasant or distinctive smell. Example: The aroma of grilled seafood and fresh fruits filled the air at the beachside cafe. Renewed, meaning restored or made new again. Example: After playing in the water, Sarah felt renewed and full of energy. Sandcastles, meaning structures made of sand, typically built by shaping and molding wet sand into various forms, often resembling castles. Example: Children at the beach spent the afternoon building intricate sandcastles decorated with seashells and flags. Comfy spot, meaning a comfortable or cozy location or position. Example: Sarah laid out her big towel on the soft sand, creating a comfy spot where she could relax and enjoy the warmth of the sun. Warmth, meaning a comfortable and pleasing degree of heat. A quality of being warm. Example: Sarah liked the warmth of the sun on her skin as she basked in its rays while sitting on the beach. Worries, meaning anxious thoughts or concerns about potential problems or difficulties. Example: When Sarah went into the cool water, the calming waves helped her forget her worries, allowing her to enjoy the moment. Gentle waves, meaning. Soft and mild movements of the water at the beach. Example: Sarah played with the gentle waves, feeling their soothing rhythm as they lapped against the shore. Frisbee, meaning a flying disc used in various outdoor games, thrown back and forth between players. Example: Sarah brought a colorful beach ball and a frisbee for a day of games and fun with her friends by the shore. Echoed. Meaning reflected or repeated sound, often in a way that creates a lasting impression. Example: The laughter and cheers of the beachgoers echoed along the shore, creating a joyful and lively atmosphere. Climbed higher, meaning the action of ascending or rising to a greater height, typically used in reference to the position of the sun in the sky. Example: As the day progressed. The sun climbed higher in the sky, casting a warm and bright light over the beach. Shells, meaning hard protective outer coverings of various sea creatures, often found on the beach. Example: Sarah collected colorful seashells along the shoreline to decorate her sandcastle, adding a touch of natural beauty. Passersby, meaning people who are passing by or walking past a particular place. Example: As Sarah finished building her sandcastle, passersby stopped to admire the intricate details and creative design she had crafted. Tide pools, meaning small pools of seawater left behind on the shore after the tide recedes, often containing a variety of marine life. Example: Sarah explored the tide pools, discovering small sea creatures like crabs and colorful fish. In these fascinating coastal ecosystems, crabs, meaning small crustaceans with a hard shell, typically found in or near bodies of saltwater. Example: In the tide pools, Sarah discovered tiny crabs scuttling among the rocks, adding to the diversity of marine life she encountered. Beachside concert, meaning a musical performance held near the beach or coastline. Often with an outdoor setting. Example: As the day went on, a beachside concert began, featuring local musicians playing lively tunes while people danced barefoot in the sand. Barefoot, meaning without shoes or any covering on the feet. Example: 
the beachgoers joined in the beachside concert, dancing barefoot in the sand, feeling the warmth and texture beneath their feet. Letting, meaning allowing or permitting, not preventing. Example, Sarah took one last walk along the water's edge, letting the waves tickle her toes, enjoying the gentle sensation before heading home. Tickle her toes, meaning lightly touch or produce a tingling sensation on the toes, often causing a pleasant or giggly reaction. Example, as Sarah walked along the water's edge, the waves playfully tickled her toes, creating a delightful and lighthearted experience. Headed, meaning moved or traveled in a particular direction. Example, grateful for the moments at the beach, Sarah headed home with a heart full of happy memories, looking forward to the next seaside adventure. Question, what did Sarah do after she built the sandcastle? Options, A, explored the tide pools, B, headed to a beachside cafe, C, played frisbee with her friends, D, took a walk along the water's edge, correct answer, B, headed to a beachside cafe. In the morning, Sarah went to the beach. The sun was up, and the sky looked pretty with pink and orange colors. Waves came to the shore, making a nice sound. The beach had shells and sand for building castles. Sarah took a big towel and found a comfy spot. She liked the warmth of the sun on her skin. Kids nearby were laughing and building sand castles. Sarah felt happy just listening. It was like a perfect picture. Later, she went into the cool water. It felt nice, and she forgot about her worries. She played with the gentle waves, feeling free. When she came out, she felt strong and happy. Sarah walked along a path with shops and ice cream stands. She got her favorite flavor and enjoyed every bite. With ice cream in hand, she walked more, taking pictures of everything she liked. When she shared the pictures online, her friends smiled too. The sun set in the evening, painting the sky in warm colors. Sarah felt really happy. The next day, Sarah woke up with excitement. She decided to visit the beach again for another day of fun. This time, she brought a colorful beach ball and a frisbee. She played games with new friends she met on the shore. The laughter and cheers echoed, creating a joyful atmosphere. As the sun climbed higher, Sarah built a sand castle with intricate details. Shells adorned the castle, making it a masterpiece of the shore. Passersby admired her creation. Feeling hungry, Sarah headed to a beachside cafe. The aroma of grilled seafood and fresh fruits filled the air. She ordered a tropical smoothie and savored the delicious blend of flavors. With renewed energy, Sarah decided to explore the tide pools. She discovered small sea creatures like crabs and colorful fish. Each discovery brought a smile to her face. As the day went on, a beachside concert began. Local musicians played lively tunes, and people danced barefoot in the sand. Sarah joined in feeling the rhythm and happiness in the air. With the sun setting again, Sarah sat on the beach, watching the sky change colors. She reflected on the two wonderful days filled with simple joys and new experiences. She took one last walk along the water's edge, letting the waves tickle her toes. Grateful for the moments, Sarah headed home with a heart full of happy memories. Hi, I'm Max. I've been with my girlfriend, Amelia, for four awesome years. Last year, we just chilled at home for Amelia's birthday, but this time we were up for something different. We decided to eat out at a French restaurant, as we both love French food. The restaurant is pretty famous, so we had to make a reservation a month in advance. When we arrived at the restaurant, the host at the entrance greeted us with a friendly smile. 
He checked our reservation and then led us to a nicely set table. After we sat down, a waiter came over to take our order. He asked us what we wanted to drink, and we chose a bottle of red wine. After pouring our wine, the waiter handed us the menus to look at. We browsed through the appetizers and main dishes. The menus listed many delicious options, and it was hard to decide what to order. We asked the waiter for his suggestions. Without hesitation, he suggested the escargot and French onion soup for our appetizer, and a classic French beef stew, the tart tatin, as our main course. While we were enjoying our meal, the waiter checked in on us to see if everything was to our liking. This kind of attention is part of good customer service. The food was absolutely delicious. After finishing our main dishes, we wanted something sweet. We looked at the dessert menu. As we contemplated our dessert choice, the waiter smiled and said, The ball is in your court. This phrase made us chuckle, realizing it was now our decision to make. We chose the creme brulee, and it was the perfect ending to Julia's birthday celebration. It was the perfect sweet treat to round off our dinner. Once we were done, I asked the waiter for the bill. Amelia and I decided to share the cost of our meal. We always prefer going Dutch on dates. After settling the bill with our credit cards, we thanked the waiter and the rest of the staff for the delicious food and wonderful service. Feeling happy and full, we left the restaurant. Interesting vocabulary and expressions. Before we start our speaking practice, let's look at some new words and expressions from our story. Chilled. Verb. Easy meaning. To relax or spend time in a calm and laid-back manner. Example. Last year, we just chilled at home for Julia's birthday, enjoying a quiet evening. Reservation. Noun. Easy meaning. The act of reserving or booking in advance, especially for a table at a restaurant. Example. We had to make a reservation a month in advance to secure a table at the famous French restaurant. Appetizer, noun, easy meaning, a small dish served before the main course to stimulate the appetite. Example, the waiter suggested the escargot as our appetizer, a delicious start to the meal. Main course, noun, easy meaning, the primary or main dish of a meal, usually following the appetizer. Example, for our main course, we chose the classic French beef stew, boeuf bourguignon. Customer service. Noun. Easy meaning, the assistance and care provided by a business to its customers. Example. The waiter's frequent check-ins showcased excellent customer service during our dining experience. Delicious. Adjective. Easy meaning, very tasty and enjoyable to eat. Example. The food was absolutely delicious and we savored every bite. Contemplate. Verb. Easy meaning. To think about or consider something deeply. Example. As we contemplated our dessert choice, the waiter suggested the creme brulee. Chuckled. Verb. Easy meaning. To laugh softly or amusedly. Example. The waiter's phrase made us chuckle, adding a lighthearted moment to the evening. Settle. Verb. Easy meaning to resolve or pay off, often in the context of a bill. Example. Once we were done, I asked the waiter for the bill, and Julia and I decided to settle the cost together. Round off. Easy meaning. Round off is a phrasal verb that means to conclude or finish something in a smooth or satisfactory way. Example. After enjoying a delicious French meal, the couple decided to round off their evening with a delightful creme brulee for dessert. Idioms. Idiom. The ball is in your court. Easy meaning. It's now your turn to make a decision or take action. Example. The waiter suggested dessert options, and when he said, the ball is in your court, it meant it was up to us to choose our favorite sweet treat to end the meal. Idiom. Going Dutch. Easy meaning, sharing the cost of something, especially a meal, among all parties involved. Example, 
Julia and I decided to go Dutch and share the cost of our delightful French meal. Question. What does the expression, the ball is in your court, mean? A. It's time to play a sport. B. It's someone else's responsibility or decision. C. It's an invitation to dance. D. It's a reference to a game of tennis. Hi, I'm Max. I've been with my girlfriend, Amelia, for four awesome years. Last year, we just chilled at home for Amelia's birthday, but this time we were up for something different. We decided to eat out at a French restaurant, as we both love French food. The restaurant is pretty famous, so we had to make a reservation a month in advance. When we arrived at the restaurant, the host at the entrance greeted us with a friendly smile. He checked our reservation and then led us to a nicely set table. After we sat down, a waiter came over to take our order. He asked us what we wanted to drink and we chose a bottle of red wine. After pouring our wine, the waiter handed us the menus to look at. We browsed through the appetizers and main dishes. The menus listed many delicious options and it was hard to decide what to order. We asked the waiter for his suggestions. Without hesitation, he suggested the escargot and French onion soup for our appetizer and a classic French beef stew, the tart tatin, as our main course. While we were enjoying our meal, the waiter checked in on us to see if everything was to our liking. This kind of attention is part of good customer service. The food was absolutely delicious. After finishing our main dishes, we wanted something sweet. We looked at the dessert menu. As we contemplated our dessert choice, the waiter smiled and said, the ball is in your court. This phrase made us chuckle, realizing it was now our decision to make. We chose the creme brulee, and it was the perfect ending to Julia's birthday celebration. It was the perfect sweet treat to round off our dinner. Once we were done, I asked the waiter for the bill. Amelia and I decided to share the cost of our meal. We always prefer going Dutch on dates. After settling the bill with our credit cards, we thanked the waiter and the rest of the staff for the delicious food and wonderful service. Feeling happy and full, we left the restaurant. Then takes you a step closer to English fluency. We can't wait to see you in our next lesson. Don't forget to hit, like, share, and subscribe for more lessons. Just like this one, your support helps us to keep creating useful content just for you until next time. Happy learning, and see you soon.